I'd like to wish you all a Teistelek. And so today we will continue speaking about the topic of Gampopa's life. Yesterday I spoke about the conditions that made Gampopo wish to see Lord Milarepa. <clears throat> so in general, the life stories, the liberation stories of Gampopo give two different accounts of how Lord Gampopo came to have the intention or the wish to see Milarepa. So the one is as I described yesterday. And the other is as in described in Dusan Kemba's dialogues with Gampopa. And that says that when Gampopa was in uh, Pembo, uh, that, that he met the three beggars. And that seems a little bit more likely. So I think that that one is more likely true. In any case, so Gampopa thought to himself, if I, if I went straight to Milarepa without asking the Kadampa gurus first, it wouldn't be right. So he went to all the gurus in U and Pempo. And he went to send, I'd like to go see a Melarepa, so please grant me permission. So generally, the Kadambas were very, were very reluctant to practice the secret mantra openly. And in particular, he was going to a place where there were uh, tantric householders. And so they thought, for that reason, what well, they must have thought, that he would probably become some sort of a Ngakba, a tantric practitioner. And so, because they thought that, it was difficult for him to get permission at first. But in the end, they uh, they agreed. And so the teacher said, Gya Yundak said, Milarepa must be a siddha, so, so take the teachings Dharma with them, but, uh, but bring them back to us. But, but do not discard these Kadampa robes. We've all gotten old. And so we're getting close to death. So you absolutely must return. And so he said, and he also gave him, they also gave him a gift of provisions for the journey. Generally, when you think about the uh, teachers of Gampapa, Gya the reason why they're all called Gya is probably because they're from the Gya clan. So they're called the Gya. Uh, I think that's what some people think that might think that means that Gya might mean some Chinese. Some people might, that means that they're from China. So, and so some people, in order to prove that uh, Kanpopa's view, uh, they, they think that, excuse me, in order, to, they think that Kanpopa's view of Mahamudra is a view of the Gana Hashangs, of the Chinese Hashangs. And so, in other words, they say that they say that his teachers were all called Gya. Um, but at uh, so they use the, the, the fact that his teachers were all named Gya uh, as proof that they are Chinese. But at that time in Tibet, just because they're being called Gya, Gya does not necessarily mean that. And in that particular, at that time, it meant the, 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 um, that they were 
it does not mean that they're Chinese. For example, Gya Yundak was someone who had spent his time really devoting himself to practice. And so he gave the, uh, he actually gave Gamboba the instructions, uh, particular instructions on uh, non thought from uh, Jay Gomboa. And also he gave the, there are texts about the Mahamudra instruction from, uh, from Gombawa. Some of Gampawa's later, later way of teaching, teaching Gampo, uh, Mahamudra. So Gampawa's way of teaching Mahamudra and Gompawa's way of teaching were uh, pretty much exactly the same. So I think, so I think probably from the, from Gyayunda, he probably received the instructions of Jay Gompawa's uh, Mahamudra instructions. So I think Gampapa must have received those from him, from Gyayunda. In any case, uh, Lord Gampapa asked for permission from the Kadapa Lamas, and he went with his friend Gongchen to in Tibet. He was really insistent, so and so he was uh, so in such a hurry that he didn't uh, he didn't eat much on the tree and he didn't sleep much on the way. So when they got to the plain of Gurmun Sang, Gong Jun uh, got very got very sick and was unable to keep going, and so they had to rest a few days. So at that time, so so Gong Jun was the sort of person who th- didn't think anything at all, and so Gong Jun thought, "I'm not going to get better immediately." And Gampopa is in such a rush to see Milarepa. Uh, he doesn't, I don't know if he, maybe they'll leave me here. But he is a good person, so I need to think of some way to do this. I need to make some way to make him not leave me. I have to do something to make him feel like he's, make him not leave me. And then he said to Gampopa, Oh, it's going to be difficult for me to get better quickly. I probably won't die, but but if this creates an obstacle for you to pra- for your pra- dharma practice, that wouldn't be good. So you go ahead. When I get better, I'll get I'll I'll call, follow along. So that's what he said. And when he said that, so Gampopa. So I thought, oh, he must, re- must thought, oh, he must have really thought that. Oh, gonna, oh, a friend should be exactly like you. You now should get here when we're together, and not sad when you're apart. So that's great. Thanks. And he gave, and he gave Gong Dun all the provisions except for the gold and tea for, uh, for offering to Miller, and then left. Gong Dun had spoken so so boldly, and he and he could. He didn't dare say, don't leave me. But in his mind, he was extremely disappointed. <laughs> he abandoned me when I was sick and ran off, he thought. He was so disappointed. Oh, I'm going to do I'm going to show him. And so when he got out, for instance, he didn't go to Tur. He didn't follow Gu, but he went down to Me, to, to Khan, the region of Khan. He gathered a lot of offerings. And so the story is later, when Gampo was in Sewalung, he brought, you know, the long Tibetan bricks of tea, you know, the long Tibetan bricks of tea, and horses and donkeys, and, and Meng Zizhen made a big show of it when he came. Uh, so there is that, that is recorded in the histories. So how did uh, Gampopa's travels to meet, uh, to meet Milarepa go? Oh, and he's on the road. He met some merchants, and he traveled with them for a fortnight. And they came to a place that was about two and a half days' journey from Milarepa, where Milarepa was staying. And he got suddenly took very ill and collapsed in a an empty empty plane. He was unconscious for half the night. And he almost was unable to regain, regain consciousness, about to pass away. And then when he eventually recovered his senses, he looked in the direction where Milarepa was said to be. 
and prayed to him, and this helped him get a bit better. So he got a little bit more strength, but he still was unable to go by foot. And so he stayed in that place for seven days. Then there was a yogi who came along the road. So this yogi came. And so he saw that Gampopo was sick. And so he took a, a cup of water and he mixed a, mixed a bit of tsampa into it and asked him what his situation was. And then he said, Oh, it's great to be with you. And so the, middle, the yoga said this. And Gampa said, said, no, I'm sick. You know, I thought you're going to be a little difficult here. Why is, it, why is it great to be with me? So what was great to be about being with me? And the, the yogi said, Guru Yoga has been saying since last year that a Tate monk from U would come and he will benefit men's sentient beings. He's been predicting this for a year. He even said the same thing the other day. Uh, so you're really, so you're, it's really great. You're really, you've got a lot of merit. When Gampopa heard this, then all of his uh, exhaustion and all of this, just, all of a sudden just went away. It's like he got right, better right, right, clear and fresh. And he said to the yoga, okay, I'm going to go with you. Let's go together. Not only did they go, the the yoga yoga said had a had a load that he was carrying, the big bag. I'm going to take that and give that to me. And I uh, said as if he had no uh, no more sickness at all. And they went along. And when they and on the on the way, the yogi said. And Gampopo will probably teach you some profound dharma. And so if you give that, get that, um, please also teach it to me. And so he said that to Gampopo. And when he said that, Gampopo thought, this, 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 this yogi was from Tsang, right? This Tsangpa is a, is a little bit foolish. He's a little bit, kind of, it's, it's spending so many years, so long with the... Uh, with the guru, and he's saying to me, he's just coming and saying, please teach me. So this is really strange. And then he asked the, guru, the yogi, have you already received the dharma from Milarepa? I mean, how many years did you spend with the guru? And so when he asked that, then the yogi said, uh, I spent 10 years with the guru. I received a lot of teachings. But the one he's giving to you is different than others. And so they so they had conversations like this as they went, and they came to Chuwar. This is a, a the so there's a later they built a monastery that it was a great place where Mildred ever practiced. And so that yogi and that, or that yogi, he just disappeared. Where he went, Gambaba had no idea where he'd gone. Not, not knowing who it was, then he thought, oh, he must have been an, an emanation. As I said yesterday, because first there were the three beggars, and they were also, they had just have disappeared, and he thought they were uh, emanations. And then the yogi again, when it disappeared without a trace, uh, and so he must have been an emanation. Then when they reached Chuwar, or then he reached Chuwar, and he went to uh, beg for food and ask uh, ask about Milarepa to a house. And when he went there, and so there was a there was a, a woman who there who was uh, weaving there, and he asked her where is Milarepa, and, and he asked her where Milarepa was. And she said that she could introduce him to a laywoman who knew uh, Milarepa, and she introduced him to an old woman. And so Nyama, this is a Tibetan word for the for the laywoman. All of Milarepa's females, they were called Nyama. 
Because they're on the because on the they are called the nyama uh, the nyama because on the full moon or the nyama and on the eighth day and the new moon they practiced that and so they in that and so in Neshan they also they also talk about nyama and and also there are many in Sikkim. So these days there is this old woman who was introduced and that old and this old woman said, uh, it's, "It'll be difficult to see Milarepa today." So to, to, uh, this evening, tonight, stay at my house. And she brought him upstairs into the house and, and gave him food. And then the old woman said to him, when I went to see the Jetson yesterday, and when I saw him, he was t- t- saying to his students, Last night, I had a dream. Uh, I had a, a silver vase that was filled with amrita. And a monk came from the east. And that monk was carrying a, an, empty white crystal, an empty crystal vase. And I dreamt that I poured all of the um, amrita from the silver vase into it. Um, so now that I'm now, now the father is getting old, and there's I'm going to have a good son, and that son will make the teachings of the Buddha shine like the sun, and he will um, probably benefit infinite sentient beings. And so, whoever whoever it is who brings him to me, that person who brings him uh, will not need to experience the the lower realms. I promise," he said. And so I will promise to bring you to the Sramadama. So tomorrow I have a I have a daughter who meditates there. And so I'll tell her. And so to please um uh ask her to bring them uh bring her to see the Jesuits. His daughter has spent time with Bilar been meditating. And then Gambaba then thought says, Oh the way the God, Lama's been predicting me. I really must be an, a student who's an appropriate vessel, really receptive. So now I probably won't have any difficulties meditating on his instructions. And so I began to feel a, a bit proud. He said, no, I must be something. And so when he went to see Melarepa the next day, then Melarepa knew that he had, uh, to, had begun to feel a bit of pride and didn't let him in and just forgot about him for, for half a month. And so after a fortnight or so, and one day, a message uh, came that the guru said to come. And so uh, immediately, Gampapa went to uh, see Milarepa. And so at that time, Gampapa was 31. And in terms of the, the year, it was uh, 1,108. The other day, I... Uh, spoke incorrectly. I said he was born in. Uh, he said, so I've spoken again. He said, sometimes I re- have trouble reading. When I was young, I didn't study. I didn't study math. I said, studied a little bit of math, but but everyone has said, well, what point is there for? Uh, what point is there for uh, monks to uh, for for lamas to study? Uh, study study arithmetic and math. The the, the stewards and the nyerpas will take care of that. And so nowadays, and so the reason because of that reason because I didn't study, I I have trouble reading uh, the num- the numbers. So basically, so what this means in in any rate case in one thousand in eleven hundred and eight when he was thirty one. Uh, Chosen Gampa met Amilarep and Tashigang in Jin. So Jin is the name of the uh, the valley, and Tashigang is a place. And so Gampopa had brought all the gold and tea to to offer to Milarepa, and he offered them, and he prostrated many times. And Milarepa said, uh, "Gold doesn't agree with this old man's mind. I have no stove to boil tea. Instead, use this for your pro- own provisions for your tea." So, so gold doesn't agree with this old man, you understand, right? So they, I don't get along with it. I don't even have a stove to, to, to boil the tea. So you use it for your own, to support yourself. 
and he gave the uh, gave it back to Gampapa. Then Gampapa joined his uh, hands in prayer and and uh, supplicated. Said, "I've come from a long way." And so, so, uh, so please, so please accept me with compassion. Uh, Milarepa replied, "You haven't come that far. People come to see me from Kham in India and other places. So actually, what is your name?" And then at time, Kampaba replied, "My name is uh, Sunam Rinjan." Sunam, Sunam said, "Sunam, Sunam, merit, merit. You come from the great accumulation of merit." You are a jewel, a rinchen for all beings. He said this three uh, for all beings. He said this three times. Later, later, the Jason said to his students, who are repas, just hearing the son of mine's name will accomplish the benefit of infinite sentient beings. But I didn't say that aloud at that time. He probably thought it'll make Gumpapa feel proud again. And so he probably didn't say it for that reason. So later, uh, the, there's a there's the founder of the Talong Kaji, the Talong Tampa said, this tradition of ours has two, uh, two lineages, the lineage of Siddhas and the lesson of lineage of Buddhism. So uh, from Gampapa is, um, um, is Buddhism. So, did, so, Gampa, so, so from Gampapa on, it's lineage of blessings, and then before that, it's lineage of Siddhas. So, did, so when we talk about Rinpoche's or jewels, they say, I mean, the precious, um, and so, and so they, so that, so really, so we say Rinpoche at the end, we say Rinchen on that, so we say Rinchen at that point. And it's not just that. So, so Gampopa, so, when he, when he blessed the students, uh, traditional students, so that they could easily realize Mahamudra, and he had this particular quality that he could do this. And because he was similar to the uh, to a uh, to a wish fulfilling jewel, he was given the title of Rinpoche or Renchen. And so, and this is a really very closely, um, uh, a very close to a very, a very fits very well with Mipra saying that he was like a jewel for all beings. And so then he went to Ding uh, Ding and Chuar, and Gambabla uh, also went down to. And so there was, and he made a hut out of um, uh, uh, they made a hut out of grass and, and wood under there and he spent there and he used the gold and so forth to gather provisions and stuff uh, and things that he would need and then he asked Miller right before the uh, provisions and Miller right gave him the chakras and var and and then the uh, empowerment of Vajravarahi by the Sindra Mandala Sindra Mandala instructions on transferring and mixing and he spent and then at that point Kampapa said to me oh, I have really good meditation I can meditate for 40 days continuously and the Milbury said yeah that's good that's fine but but no matter how good your medicine is you're, the only result you're going to get is going to be re, being reborn in the form, uh, formless realm no matter how much you squeeze sand you'll never get oil out of it Likewise, Gampapa and Mipala were speaking about, talking about, uh, had a conversation about Kadampa and the Tantra. And Milarepa said, and Mipala said, like a big monster has got into Tibetan's, uh, Tibetan people's breasts. Atisha was not allowed to give secret mantra, and that's just ruined everything. Everything's been ruined. He said that. And then when he said that, Katampa said, the Katampa also have many, also have many Tambadic branches. And Milarpa said, those may be secret mantra, but without, they, don't, they aren't pith instructions. And without the pith instructions, you want to achieve accomplishment. 
And meditating on the stage of the paths and selfless is just meditating on the on, on the universe. So it's not actually taking uh, taking perception as a path. So don't close your mouth and just meditate and just do what I say and meditate upon the uh, path of means. And so then you meditate on prana, prana, which means uh, tuma. So it's meant for a year meditating on that. So in total, he spent 13 months with uh, Milarep and received all the profound instructions of the kaju. So then when he was 32 in uh, 1109, uh, uh, Gampopa prepared to return to U in central Tibet. And Milarepa accompanied as far as a small river where there is a small stone bridge. And he said, I'm not going to cross that river. Now, there's like an important point about interdependence here. And so now you, let's, you and me, the father and son, sit down and then have a little conversation. So they sat down and he gave Gampopa, he gave a Myra Balan fruit and a flint and steel to, to light fires. So in the past, when I had difficult times, and there was a time when I had trouble developing practicing in that center. And, uh, and at that time, I had, through these instructions, I had uh, developed experience and realization. And so at this time, you have difficulty in the future. You need the, you'll need these instructions. And so then he gave Kampopa the pointing out on the inseparability of prana and mind. And so that instru uh, instruction on the pointing out of inseparability of prana and mind, it was passed down from Gampopa. And so he gave uh, in the, the to do some champa the instruction in the creation and completion phase of the phase of Vajravara, this instructions of the inseparability of prana and mind. And this has become a particular uh, particular uh, a particular feature of the Karma Kamsan. And then and then Miller said, now actually you're probably going to be like really great power paramount of met, great meditator so now you must you must not have any arrogance about family or friend and if you have any attachment uh, you shouldn't be attached at all to your relatives you must give up on this life be a child of the mountains practice all dharma in union and i'm an old man but continually pray to me in particular, do not associate with people who have great desire or great hatred or great delusion because the reason is that they're going to influence and that their stains will affect you. And wherever you go, like a wounded animal, be careful and do not let your mindfulness decrease. And in your conduct, be peaceful and subdued. And I should always be very patient and forgiving. And no matter who you meet, please get along with everyone. And I'll also be very clean, but don't think too much. So whenever you can, keep to silence, don't speak a lot, and keep it, you need to stay in strict retreat. Even though you realize your own mind to be a Buddha, do not abandon the Guru. In actuality, there's no accumulation or purification, but gather even the smallest accumulation of merit. And so though you realize karma and results have no truth, avoid even the smallest misdeed. So you have no the experience of there being no or no post-meditation, do the practice of uh, sessions and breaks. Even if you understand yourself and others to be equal, do not denigrate the Dharma individuals. And so in this way, he gave me these really important points of instruction. So you must come to, on the 14th day of the horse month in the year of the hair, you must come down to the area between Jun and Yenam. And so he said this, and then he also made the uh, prophecy about the uh, the place of Dala Gampa. So then Gampopa at that time said, How's that a precious guru? You said a while ago that you had a uh, profound instruction that you would give me later. Now, please give it to me. So now, please, I'm about to go, so please give it to me, right? And so he asked this and read, and when we left, but when it... I said, what the instructor did, said, said Milarep had spent so long practicing his, uh, his buttocks. So if we don't 
And so it's, it had been covered up with calluses. It like it just uh, t- totally filled it. It's like it was like a uh, it was like a, a monkey's bottom. And so it was really it had gotten really tough. And so it, he didn't have any cushions like we sit on, right? He just sat directly on the bare ground. And so his, uh, he showed his his bottom that had become like a monkey's, and he said. He said, I practiced until I got like this. You also need to find some grit and determination and meditate. And so in this way, he uh, was parted from Milarepa. So after Gambhapa met uh, Mijelis, he once again went to U. And all the, the Karamba gurus before had told him that he said, you're going to go see Mila Rip and get the instruction, but don't, but don't give up your uh, Kadampa robes. And so he, as, as the Kadampa said, he taught, he wore the, the hat and the robes and the uh, shoes as taught by the Kadampas. And when he went to them and he uh, went to see the uh, Kadampa gurus and um, they were very pleased. And particularly um, the the Geshe Trepa and Geshe Chayu were very um, present. As I mentioned, Geshe Trepa, is, as I mentioned, is, uh, he met him on the... Uh, so some, some said that he met him on, on the way to his place. And some place that he also went to Geshe Nurumpa. And at that time, Nurumpa said to him, what, I said, what... Uh, uh, what qualities developed when he met Milarepa? Well, the the my my winds do not move inside or out, and I have uh, realization extended. But I have great, uh, so now it's time for you to benefit sentient beings," said Nirumpa. And so, but Gampa said, "I'm not going to have a long life," said Gampa. But the Japanese have predicted it, so so it's better for me to practice. And Nirumpa said, "You don't need to worry about that. I have uh, uh, I have the instructions for a long life, and gave him the empowerment of what." Of uh, what Tara, but when we look at the lineage uh, tradition, trish, the the empowerment in the Chikamakaja tradition, it says that it's passed down from Geshe Trepa, but it does not say that it's from Geshe Nirumba. So at that time, if, so if we think about, uh, if we look at Dusan Kimpa's uh, instruction uh, dialogues, he says that he met uh, Geshe Trepa, but not Nirumba. So we need to look at that at them. Then he also went to see Gyayunda when you met Milarepa in the, before. And you've come back. Yeah, as I told you to give you the Dharma. So now please give me all the uh, the instructions you have. And when he explained the wizard and how he developed meditation, and then the Gyayunda said, Oh, this turned out really well for you. So I think I probably also need to go see uh, uh, Milarepa. And so uh, he also said that. And so it, this also occurred. And so I also want to get you uh, Chariwa. And he received the teachings that he hadn't yet listened to. And Chaturgava said, now you're, a, uh, now you're all just a single person, but in the future you will be very well known. And you have created vast, uh, vast, uh, vast activity and a lot of fame. So now at that time in Peyu, there was a great uh, famine, actually. And so because the, the famine, he couldn't get anything. He couldn't get any provisions for his retreats. So in whatever other practice he would he had no choice but to go anywhere else. He asked uh, the, for permission to go, and he went to other uh, other places. He went to Takpo and Tsoga, but he didn't receive uh, receive any uh, provisions. So in the end, he went to his own homeland, and we went there. There's a, there's a place called Sewalung that um, the really pleasant place where his mother was born, named um, Sewalung. And so there he uh, uh, did meditation practice. And so before that, but before that, he didn't get good, he didn't get food. So his, he, he didn't have any, uh, he didn't have any strength in his body. And because of that, his meditation did not go well. And Milarepa had earlier said to him that if you don't have the uh, strength in your body, then you won't be able to do it. So, so he said, "Don't for." Uh, and he remembered that Killer, that Miller had told him not to uh, to, to continue to meditate on on Tuma. and so he, then he ate more nutritious food and a little, and ate more food, and he prayed to Miller every day and meditated on Tumo. He only meditated on Tumo, and he was able to gain uh, 
can control over the the bliss and heat. As Miller at Bad Brissett did, you will you will have the your, the bliss and heat will enter the expanse as uh, Miller ever predicted, and so it did occur as Miller ever predicted predicted. So at that point, uh, at that time, Mah- Gampopa did meditate a bit on Mahamudra, but he primarily meditated on on Tumo. And when he achieved the power, uh, po- the power of the bliss and emptiness, then he was be able to recognize the nature of mind before, more clearly before, and his meditation was much more clear, uh, more vivid than before. And sometimes the images were sometimes like um, uh, dreams and illusions, and sometimes they're like they seemed really uh, true and stable. So these experience. Then eventually, as it got as it got as it improved, the external appearances. It's like they all just kind of uh, fell apart. They uh, all the appearance just. Uh, they just fell apart and dissolved into the nature of the mind. He had an experience like this as well. The mind itself sort of became like damn, the nature of turned into meditation, like everything uh, was just a conceptual projections. And so, and so the thoughts are just like they come spontaneously. They're like they're like uh, they're like travelers. And so he had this sort of great sort of great, sort of great emanations that kind of showed in their mind. And they're all just uh, emanations of the mind. And so he had to really, it came in from inside. And it's like all his previous pract- uh, practice at all sort of like the like an eggshell. It wasn't like, it's just the outside, the shell on the outside. It wasn't the actual thing. And so he realized that he didn't need to pay, to have put any faith into confused appearances. All appearances are just, and sometimes he really thought, to, thought that they're all, uh, they're just complete untrue and emptiness. Sometimes they're like, uh, untrue and like illusion. He had such. Um, he, had, he had such experiences, and when these experiences, sometimes, sometimes the meditation. Since he was continually meditate, meditating, sometimes he really felt like that is really enhancing or proving my meditation. But even that, when he looked at it early, that it was just, it just, it was just a. Uh, it was just a little bit. It was like the uh, the realization getting a little bit deeper, but not actually uh, improving. Just getting more deeply set in. So basically, when looking at the nature, the nature of the mind, or the essence of the mind, no matter how much he looked at it, he said it's just that Lama Mipa was like a, the Dharmakaya. We'd see we see him as a human, a, a citizen, but actually he's. So, Zing actually is by nature the Dharmakaya, and he developed real, uh, developed real uh, conviction in this, and felt even more devotion for the uh, uh, more devotion for the guru. And then he sang songs about the about the uh, uh, song songs. He sang songs about his realization, and he had a bodhicitta mala, and that had twenty one. It had twenty one seeds on it. And so there's a the tree, and he, and he went to the, and he said, if I, if I've been prophesied by all the Buddhas of the three times, then may this, uh, may the if if I said so, may the, uh, if this is true, may the, may this bodhicitta, uh, may the bodhicitta grow into a tree, and by the power of speaking these words of truth, then it uh, then it grew, and then that's. And it grew a bodhicitta tree, and that tree is, and it's. They say that you can even uh, uh, still see the uh, this the this old tree. And so, basically, Sawa Long he spent six or seven years practicing. And later, the cave warriors called us on the uh, the the cave of seeing the essence because he'd seen the essence of the nature of mind. It was called the seeing the the essence. Seeing the essence, and so on the seventh Karmapa Chure Chure went to say, "Well, he said, he uh, he went there and he saw this cave of seeing the essence. So there must have been the cave there. So generally, the and so uh, Gampapa must have told all the way he developed his experience and realization to his students without hiding any of them." 
And so what he said is, if he had told the experiences of developing shamatha, it would have hurt, harmed people. But when he reached, uh, when he achieved realization, um, that generally when you talk about ex uh, insight, if when you talk about realizations, it's harmful to tell them to people. But, but he's, uh, um, but he, but Gambo realized that telling it would not harm them, and because he realized that it would help his students, he taught it without hiding anything. So how is it that we know about his realization and so forth? It's because he, uh, he had uh, told them to all students, and so therefore we had received them. And then when he was 39, in 1118, he went to Ulka, and he, and he spent uh, three years practicing there. So he was not three years, he went to Ulka. So Ulka is a is a place where many uh, uh, learned and uh, learned and accomplished masters practice. Shei Tsongkhapa also went, to, uh, spent a long time practicing there, and Yao Longchenpa probably also went to Ulka. So many Tibetan lamas went there. It's a very important place, a very sacred place. So Ulka. So Ulka is the place where Jeg or Lord Gampopa actually realized the nature of his mind. So it's Ulka is where he actually realized the nature of mind. As it says in uh, Palmodrupa's uh, uh, supplication to the liberation of the Guru, when, st when he stayed in Ulka, he realized all phenomena like dreams are untrue. And the elaborate became manifest. He said, this is my last birth. Uh, I prostrate you, Lord of the 10th level. And so it says, uh, as Paul Mudriba said, the place where he actually realized the nature of mind was there. Also, Gombatsutu Nimbo, who is one of uh, Gampapa's nephews, says Godun Simbarad. Uh, the place where he first met uh, Lord Gampapa was um, in Ulka. So one day, that is Gombatsutu Nimbo. So this is so the uncle was Dapodam and his two nephews uh, so, so nephews. So he's his uh, older brother's younger a younger son. So Golden Sumber went. And he said to Gombatsu Nimbo, I'm a I'm a Bodhisattva in my last lifetime, but don't tell anyone else because they 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 won't they won't be able to understand it and they'll uh, gather misdeeds. So it's like a sign of his realization. While he was staying in Ulka, uh, the Jetson had he remembered that Jetson had, that the Jetson Miller had told him to come return on a particular day, and he went to go see. And on the way, he met Rajimba, and uh, and Rajimba said the the Lama's passed away, and he passed passed away, and so he gave the. Uh, uh, gave him his share of the of the relics, and at that point, uh, Gampopa fell unconscious. So, only after a lot of water had been sprinkled on it, splashed on his face, did he regain his consciousness. And he had several, a uh, little bit of gold that he was carrying, and he just tossed this all in the direction of where the of where the where the guru had passed away. And he said. And he sang songs about remembering the guru. In the case before, uh, before Miller passed away, he'd left a uh, he'd left a testament, right? A written testament. He'd left a will or a testament. Give this to that student, and so forth. He left a testament, right? And likewise, Miller, but what said is it? I have a little bit of gold that I've gathered up and gathered in the course of my lifetime, and after I've died, then so you're going to need to uh, divvy up that gold. The students are like, is it chiller, is it? But is it? Does can Miller ever really have gold? How would Miller ever get gold? They're all uh, talking about this, and later. 
But the but the place that dug up the place where he said it was, there was no gold. But there's no gold, but there is a there is a piece of sugar. Um a cube of sugar. And then he'd written next to that up there is a he had written something, it said in this. So whoever says that Miller said gold would put shit in his mouth. I don't have any gold. I don't need gold at all. So you just you you all um, divvy up this uh, the sugar. So he went to Ulka. Then he went back to Ulka. And so this is probably the place where he met uh, Lord Dusim Kempa. At Ulka, he spent ten years uh, at Ulka and such places. And then when he was 50, 51 years old, in 1128, he went to Dahla Gampo. And when he went to Dahla Gampo, he thought to himself, I should spend 12 years during practice. And we, when he thanked him, and in the dream, there was a woman who came, whose who had body was smeared with ashes. Um, she was had a feather in her hand, as she said. Uh, it's, uh, instead of spending 10 years tr- uh, sealed in retreat, it's better to spend t- 12 years uh, spreading the teachings. And so and so he decided at that point to begin uh, to f- gathering his students and, and s- nurturing his students. So the, generally the Dhamma Rinpoche's or Gampapa's way of uh, nurturing students is that in general, to the in common, he taught them all the stages of the path, according to the Kadampa, he taught, and he taught them the and then, and then he would teach them the, the Sutra uh, Mahamudra of, of the uh, Koh Merchant Yoga, and then for the particular students, he would teach the path of means of mantra. So in brief, and if he had the Kadampa pith instructions. On the fa- as the foundation, the st- foundation that submits on the on the top on the and on the on that path, you have the uh, path of the union of Mahamudra, and so in this way of the confluence of the Kadampa and Mahamudra. And if we combine these all, this the summary of this all is in the four uh, four dharmas of Gampopa, which we will discuss starting from tomorrow. And so, in brief, Gampopa himself had great experience and realization and blessings. And his students, and he was very good at giving instructions that were just at the right level for his students. So many of his students uh, had uh, had experienced realization and miraculous powers all arise at the same time. And so, so what Gampapa said to his students, said, I had a really difficult time developing experience and realization. But it's really easy for you. So, and it's and not only are the instructions uh, profound, but there are also there's a, the kaiju has a, a trans- transmission of blessing that is unlike any other. And so, if you can practice, then then there are many of you who will um, uh, start down the path towards liberation. And so, so do. So primarily for uh, imp- uh, improving your meditation, removing obstacles, and developing experience, you must continually meditate on Guru Yoga. So to, and he said, so there are many people who have come. Uh, there are many ca- characteristics from a Guru, but the main one that you that is actually that's only one that you need, and that is devotion for the Guru. And so in this way, he'd be able to bring an untold number of students to the ripening of liberation. So then when he was uh, uh, 70, 75 in 1153, he started to get a little, uh, started to have a few health problems. And he said to his students, I'm not going to last for a long time. So if you want to re- uh, receive any more teachings, come and take them. If you have any doubts or, or, or questions, please ask questions. But basically, when you're teaching Dharma, you don't need a lot of teachings. My instructions, the main points, 
keep them in uh, keep them in your mind. And so he gave this instruction, and then and before he passed away, he said, "All the students who came, he primarily taught them only Mahamudra." And then Gonsu is like the 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 primary on holding up his lineage was Jay Gomsul. And so Jay Gomsul was so thinking about, please leave a testament for students of the future. And when Gomsul made that request, then the main lesson, there are many, but of course the main point there is any student the, or any individual who has not met me um, who thinks if they receive the, if they read the precious garland of the supreme path and the ornament of pressure realization, if they re- if they re- if you read those, it'll be no different than actually meeting me. So even though this, even though the, so actually this, the appearance of the guru will dis- will will disappear, like a dream. But the the compassion, the blessings will remain. And so, if you pray, so, uh, so without forgetting me, have devotion and supplicate me. And if you supplicate me, then you will have have for instance, And so, this is not just Gampopa, but actually, all, many masters have also said similar things. And so, for this reason, sometimes when we we say, "I don't find a, a guru," so I don't have anyone to supplicate you, and they complain, "We don't have any authentic gurus. We don't have any genuine gurus." They have faith and devotion, then if you pray to the, the gurus and the three jewels, on all of the gurus who have come from our teacher, the Buddha Shakyamuni, and to all the, and to, there, there have been so many masters who have experience and realization that cover the entire earth. And if you pray to them, it means like... There's like no problem of not of lacking people to supplicate people. To, the question, the the problem is that there's not enough people who are supplicating. Uh, the people who are praying, who are supplicating, don't have enough faith and devotion. That's the problem. So in that year, on the sixth, on the fifteenth day of the of the sixth Tibetan month, when the sun rose, uh, Jagampoba passed away. And Jagampoba had many students who had achieved siddhas, and among them, the most famous were the the four disciples or the four siddhas, also the four who upheld the lynch, the four the four close sons, uh, the four the four who stayed in his presence, and the uh, the two uh, the two special siddhas, uh, so the eighteen siddhas. But those who had the greatest activity were uh, so the Gompatsutram, who is one of his two, uh, nephews, Dogen Pamudruba, who is the second, Barum Dhamma Wunchuk was the third, and the uh, Drupto and the Siddha Kampa Use, or white haired Kampa, or Dusum Kyempa. These were the four with the greatest activity. Those who, uh, those are the ones who would continue to uphold the teachings that the continue to be like the life force of the, uh, the Kadampa Chijas. So now I've given a life account of the life and liberation of Gampopa. So starting from tomorrow, uh, I have to talk about the four Tandasunas. If I only t- tell you stories and tell you history about Tandasunas, it's not okay, right? Well, that wouldn't be right. So starting from tomorrow, I will teach on the four dharmas. So actually the four dharmas, I gave you yesterday. Some, there's only one stanza, right? But I'll give it a bit of longer explanation. I have to give it a little bit of explanation. So basically, especially in the collected works of Gampo, but there are the, so the, what are the, instru- the pith instructions on the, on the, on the four, uh, on the four dharmas and that are in the works of the actual disciples of, of Gampopa. So if I combine all of these and teach you the new, I'll do as much as I can to teach you about the four dramas of Gampopa. So thank you very much.